Oh, good. <laughs> ready? Everybody ready? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here bright and early. Um, I'd like to thank the fire marshals, the fire chiefs, and the advocates for helping with this bill. As you know, there was a fire in a public housing high-rise in my district right before Thanksgiving. Five people died. My thoughts and prayers are with those families. The building was built in 1970 and did not have sprinklers. So the bill that we are introducing, Representative Noor and I, will require retrofitting of automatic sprinkler systems in certain buildings by 2032. It does allow for extension requests. This bill will save lives. The bill requires owners to submit to the state fire marshal a letter intending, stating their intent to comply and include a plan for achieving the compliance by August 22nd. So they have to do the letter by August 2022 and then do the retrofitting by 2032. So the bill allows the commissioner to adopt rules to implement the bill and to establish a work group to advise the commissioner on rules and extensions. These are critical life safety, maintenance, repairs, and upgrades that are needed to keep the people in public housing and other buildings safe. We don't need anybody else to die. We can do this. Thank you for being here, and I'll pass it on to Representative Knorr. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm uh, State Representative Mahmoud Noor. I represent District 60B, that is uh, in Minneapolis. It's the home for the City Riverside apartment that uh, my colleague, my Senator, uh, Carrie Dietzek, just talked about. On that day, we lost five individuals. Their names are Nadifo Mahmoud, Jerome Stewart, Taylor Byrne, Mary Mahmoud, Amatullah Adam, including firefighter was injured in that fight. Unfortunately, that incident should never have brought us here today talking about legislation. We should never wait for devastation like that for us to act in order to bring change. In fact, former Governor Annie Carlson himself said we made a mistake when he vetoed the two bills in 1993, I believe in 1994. Uh, we owe it to those families. We have to look into ways to save lives in any given incident of fire, you need three things. You need firefighters, you need smoke detectors, and you need sprinklers in order to save lives. The fire that happened in Drake in Minneapolis recently, and many other incidents should never happen in the state of Minnesota. And this is now an opportunity for us to rectify the wrong that we did many, many years ago. So this is a time that we have to stand up for our families to live in a safe and a secure space and to be able to assure everyone that you are going to have a place in Minnesota, in a home that you will feel safe. For those who we lost, I, I pass the message of condolences. And for those who are injured, who are still recovering, we pray for you to have a quick recovery and we have to get things done from moving forward. So we have introduced House File 3003, which we will have a hearing next week on Thursday in public safety around 12.45 p.m. So looking forward to robust conversation uh, to address the, spring, the automatic sprinklers in all buildings, whether public housing or privately owned. Thank you so much. Alex. I'm next Chair. <laughs> I'm Alice Hausman. I chair the House um, Housing uh, Finance and Policy uh, Committee. And um, I'm here to give a little past history and then uh, to talk about the priority we're setting this year. In, the, in past years, um, general obligation bonding, for, for which we, is what we use for public housing, would get, if they were lucky, two or three million. Uh, in a big year, it would be 10 million. And so um, the um, result is underinvestment in public housing in a very serious way. This year, the Homes for All agenda asks for $100 million for general obligation bonding for public housing. Um, that's a significant change. It's, uh, it's elevating this issue to, to say we've, uh, we've ignored it in the past. We cannot do that anymore. One of the reasons why this year we are uh, increasing that amount is the federal government 
every year uh, withdraws from uh, investments in this. And so it's a time for, for the state to, to step up in a, a more significant way. So the Homes for All agenda includes $100 million for general obligation bonding, and that is, um, of course, used for public infrastructure, for public housing. It's going to be a high priority for us this year. Uh, I'm Representative Tim Mahoney from 67A. I believe this is, I don't believe this will be coming to my committee, but I'll be championing it in all the committees that I sit on. It's really important. Um, and it's a personal thing for me. Uh, when I was a young man, there was a fire in my home. And my younger brother uh, was trapped in the basement. So it's personal when I stop and think that he could have died there. He was very lucky to get out. Uh, and then I spent a year working for the St. Paul City Fire Department as an inspector. And I saw instances where every apartment building should have and must be, at some point in time, sprinkled. You have senior citizens that can't move fast and quickly to get out of these buildings. You have young children in some of these buildings that get confused or scared and freeze. We can't afford to let anyone die unnecessarily in a fire. And it's a good use of our state tax dollars because we have these buildings not just in Minneapolis and St. Paul, but throughout the state. And this money will be used there. No one should die unnecessarily in a fire. They are preventable. And sprinklers are the best way to prevent them. And I'll be supporting this bill as wholeheartedly as I possibly can. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hassan and Mohammed. I happen to be one of the relatives and uh, close family member who was lost in that fire incident. Uh, her name was uh, Nadifa Mahmoud. And um, uh, we have a, a very close family relationship. Matter of fact, I went to school with one of our sons from uh, kindergarten all the way to high school. So this is a personal uh, great loss to my family. Um, we feel it every day. Her loss is um, felt all around the neighborhood with all the rest of the victims over there. Uh, I happened to take also the fire ops training about two years ago, so I know what first responders in the fire uh, go through because I wore all those uniforms and stuff. Uh, sprinklers do save lives. This is a time for us to stand up and make sure our elders are really taken care of. Um, this fire so happened to be on a 14th floor, and we still had victims from floors above the 14th who happened to die because of the exhaustion of coming down the stairs. So the, the, it's, it's realistic. Uh, some of the victims um, could not move out so fast. The fire was really coming out seriously. And people in that building do use take, uh, medication. This happened at the late of you know early morning, about 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. So we have to be realistic. And I suggest uh, we, we do some urgency on this because our elders do deserve a safe and healthy environment where they live. Everybody in public housing does deserve that as well. Um, it's paramount. We can't put price on life. Uh, I've always said this. You cannot go fund life back once it's gone. So uh, I would suggest and I would ask all the legislators to support this, expedite it in committees, expedite it in the processes. We want to make sure everybody gets taken care of in all the public housing and they're safe and sound in their homes. Thank you. I'm Steve Zackard, uh, retired fire marshal from the city of St. Paul. And uh, just want to talk a moment about high-rise firefighting. They're particularly difficult for firefighters, mostly because they're beyond the reach of, of the tallest ladders that, that firefighters have. They, have. they have to fight it from inside, and, and it's also difficult for people to get out from inside. And uh, an apartment building ha has a uh, stove in every unit, and careless cooking is a leading cause of fire. So there's going to be fires in these high-rise buildings that are beyond the reach of the, the fire department. It's very labor-intensive, very time-consuming, and very dangerous. The Minneapolis Fire Department did an incredible job getting this ravaging fire out so, actually so quickly, considering it was at the 14th floor, which is most fire department ladders can't reach beyond six or seven stories. So. Uh, High-rise buildings are particular, particularly difficult to fight fires in, and fire sprinklers are the best fire protection you can have. They put water directly on the fire almost immediately. 
long before the fire department can even arrive. So it's, it only makes sense to sprinkle these high-rise buildings and, and protect the, the thousands of people's, people that live in them from, from the fire and, and mostly the smoke. So uh, we tried that back in the 1990s. Uh, we saw there were uh, mass casualty fires all across the country in high-rise buildings. We saw it coming. We were trying to get ahead of it in the 90s, and, and the legislature did pass high-rise sprinkler retrofit bill twice, only to be vetoed, as you know. Uh, so it's, that hasn't changed, and it's, it's time to do now what we couldn't complete 20-some uh, years ago. 30 years ago. So uh, fire sprinklers are the best fire protection you can have, whether it's in your high rise or in your home. Yeah. Questions? Questions? Do you want to dedicate some money from the bonds? This could be house. Uh, do you want to dedicate some money from the bonds to help public uh, agencies do these? You, you talk about 100 million. Is there, are you going to try to carve out some of that as a grant program of some sort? Um. I know they are looking that at. I know um, Senator Smith is looking at that on a federal level for if they can carve out kind of like they did a carve out for um, lead abatement. So they're looking at that on the federal level. And I've had conversations with Governor Walz's office on possibly doing that with, uh, um, with his bonding proposal. And then I think we are discussing a separate bill that would do that in the legislature. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you come up with $100 million? Uh, for Minneapolis Public Housing Authority alone are estimating $30 million for the costs just for sprinklers alone. Right, I think that's the whole, um, so the, the, in the general house million is for the entire state, right? Yeah. So that's not just, it's so not for one, for one city, that would be a third of that if it was passed. Um, just, I mean, I guess the overall question is this is yeah. obviously a massive undertaking for, right, so in the, the, the critical maintenance and critical needs and infrastructure needs across the state public housing is probably closer to 354 million. And then a portion of that would be for life-saving entities and life-saving issues, which could be, you know, if a um, elevator doesn't work. Um, the, in Minneapolis, is 152 million in critical need backlog, and of that, 30 to 60 million would be um, sprinklers and related plumbing. So that's how the numbers that I'm looking at. I know from the Homes for All proposal for 100 million. Do you know how they got 100 million? No, I think it's a good round number to have start with a discussion. Are there any plans to provide funding for some of the private owners of buildings? You mentioned the, the bonding for public housing authorities. Is there anything for the private folks? Um, Representative Noor and I are discussing that and having, um, especially with some of, we have a common bond is in our district. We have two large public ho housing, they're not public housing, but two large low-income housing buildings there that don't have sprinklers, so we're in conversations with them to see what would need it, and I'll let you no, that's exactly right. And for private business owners, uh, there's a tax credit at the federal level, which they should be taking advantage of, up to a million dollars, if they're going to do retrofitting uh, sprinklers. You mentioned um, in the 90s uh, getting vetoed. You know, we were trying to take care of this a while ago. It seems like a no-brainer, but what do you expect moving forward? Any pushback or any, you know, speed bumps in the, in the road? Yeah. Quite frankly, I have not seen anybody say that they're against the bill. I have not received any opposition to this bill. I've been talking about it, and we've been talking about it since uh, last year in December, so I have not seen any resistance, and I'm hoping that we will uh, get it done this time. I think the, um, the devil's in the details. I believe my understanding in talking to people that were around in the 90s when it was vetoed is funding became an issue, so that might become an um, become an issue, but that's why we're having the conversations of to make sure that the um, public housing bonds are available and can be used for that. I realize it's a very expensive project, but 2032 is a long way out, mm -hmm. uh, almost as far out as the 90s were back for those vetoes. Why wait this long? Uh, I think it is a combination, again, of funding and of planning and of uh, again, planning, funding, and then just figuring out in this tight labor market how quickly can you do it? Hopefully they can get it done sooner, but I think if we're gonna be realistic to get it passed, I think we need to literally give people time to plan. So, Senator, you, so it, it could be a chunk of this 100 million, but you want that 100 million to be for lots of public housing, new, new construction, for instance. And you talk about maybe a separate bill, um, 
Is this maybe some supplemental budget, one-time only money? What might be done funding-wise as separate from the housing bonds? Um, the housing bond has their, so the Homes for All has their their project. We were looking at and discussing, should it be a one-time appropriation or should it be bonding? Um, again, if the looking at the overall picture, 354 million across the state, 152 million deferred maintenance for the city, with 30 to 60 for sprinklers. And so, could you do a, you know, one-time supplement to get it started? Um, if it's about one to two million per building um, for the city of Minneapolis, or do you look at literally putting that specifically as a carve out in bonding in a separate bill? Well, Mr. Zachard. Um, I believe that uh, St. Paul has sprinkled all its high rises. Can you tell us about that project and what the results have been? Well, the St. Paul Public Housing Agency has retrofit their 16 high rise buildings. It took them over 20 years, 21, 22 years. And uh, so this project does take a long time, not only to fund, but just the labor to get it all done. But anyway, uh, there were years during that period of time there were years during that period of time when the, they couldn't find funding and they weren't doing any work, and then they got funding. Uh, they were uh, committed to sprinkling. It was the right thing to do, and they'd had fires, as I explained earlier. Apartment buildings are going to have fires. They had fires that would displace dozens of residents, but in the sprinkled building, oftentimes displaced just the one resident that had the fire. And so there's the, the tenant displacement, the property loss, but more importantly, the, you know, the life safety built in when you have fire sprinklers putting the fire out right away. But they, uh, they it took a long time, but they were committed to it. And it took over two decades to do it, but they got it all done. And, and uh, just one story, I, I, at one of their high-rise buildings, the last one they did, the fire sprinkler inspector approved it, and the very next day they had a stovetop kitchen fire that was put out by one sprinkler head the day after the fire sprinkler permit was approved. and. Only that resident had to be displaced and nobody was injured. And that's what fire sprinklers in these buildings can do. And uh, uh, Minneapolis has a lot more, I think 40-some of these high-rise buildings. They have a lot more, a lot more uh, buildings to get sprinkled. The legislation had mentioned that a working group could be formed um, and listed some of the groups that could be included in that working group. How did you select those different entities? So the working group was selected based on what was discussed many, many years ago. And this issue should have been continuously being discussed until we find the solution. But nobody took that initiative. So we decided to include whoever was included in that uh, bill in 1994, 95, I believe. So uh, we are willing to include others who are going to be sitting at the table to make sure that the working group, uh, is a, it's an option for the commissioner to get it done. So. Uh, I just wanted to welcome the uh, fire marshal. If you wanted to come and say a few Thank statements. You. You, you know this issue very well, better than all yes. of us. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Brace. <clears throat> I work uh, part-time for the National Fire Sprinkler Association. I'm the Minnesota coordinator. But more importantly, um, I was your state fire marshal from 1987 to 2003 which was the period that our representative was just describing, 94, 95, when we tried this issue uh, twice. Um, there's an old expression that says you can't go home again, uh, but uh, that may not be true uh, in this case, and we're delighted, uh, all of us who feel that sprinklers are the ultimate level of fire safety and fire protection, to have a, a second bite or third bite at this <coughs> apple. And we really salute uh, the representative of the Senator Dietrich, uh, for their enthusiasm. I was walking over to this morning and I was thinking about who is at risk the most from fire in a general sense. And, and we statistically, it, it says that our children, 10 and under, and our seniors, 60 and over. And where's the single most unsafe occupancy? It's a single family residence. More people die at home. But in close proximity, we've just experienced this tragedy in Minneapolis where five people perished, and it could be considerably more had it not been for the skill and the effort of the Minneapolis Fire Department. 
So I see a, a bit of an irony, but a, a, a pleasant one that low income housing will be receiving the focus that is needed for years in this whole high rise retrofit issue. And the least are going to be protected the best. Clearly, statistically, sprinklers are the ultimate level of fire protection, which over 97% of the time, only one head goes off. Now, I know that some of you moviegoers uh, remember uh, some of these action figures, uh, Schwarzenegger and others, that all of a sudden the whole room uh, is uh, awash with, uh, with sprinkler heads, one at a time. And I think it's important to recognize that this technology is not something new and earth-shaking. It's been around since the last century. So we're very excited to have the opportunity to work with the fire service, the low-income housing administrators, the legislature, and all other people of good mind and good heart to bring the level of fire safety up in these residences so that we don't experience uh, the tragedy that is ultimately only another fire away. Really appreciate the level of interest uh, that's represented here by the media uh, this morning on this critical life safety issue. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Senator, your lease says that uh, up to 40 Minnesota buildings uh, do not have sprinkler systems that were built before 79. Are they, where are they located? Are most of them in Minneapolis or are they scattered around the state? Um, there's, there are 26 in Minneapolis that still have to be done. And then I think we're taking inventory, um, working with uh, Minnesota public housing organizations to figure out where those are located specifically where they're located. They have the inventory, but I didn't see the exact where they're located. And just to clarify, that description of 40 Minnesota buildings, is that 40 government-owned buildings, or is that 40 buildings total in Minnesota? I'm going to have to clarify that with you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you all for being here. Thank you.